Good day everyone and welcome back to our math room. Let's learn together another lesson in calculus and the focus is all about the limits of exponential functions. Now, let us have the learning objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to compute the limits of exponential functions using the table of values and graphs of the functions. Real-world situations can be expressed in terms of functional relationships or so-called mathematical models. In applications of calculus, it is quite important that one can generate these mathematical models. They sometimes use functions like the exponential functions. Hence, we start this lesson by recalling its definition and graphs. When we say exponential function, it is a function in which the exponent of the expression has a variable. It is denoted by f of x is equal to a raised to x, where the value of a is a constant and has to satisfy the conditions that a is greater than 0 and not equal to 1. While the variable x is the exponent in which its domain is an element of real numbers. Now, let us recall the graphs of exponential functions. First, if the base a is greater than 1, then the graph increases as x increases. And it is very obvious by looking at this graph. Again, as x increases, y increases. On the other hand, if the base a is between 0 and 1, then the graph decreases. Meaning to say, as the value of x increases, y decreases. To further understand this, let us consider the exponential function f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. Let us analyze the table of values and the graph of this function. First, let's begin with the table of values. Looking at this table, we use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 as the values of x. And to find the values of f of x, we can do direct substitution by plugging in each value of x to the given function. Let's say for an example, when x is negative 2, so we have 2 raised to negative 2 will give us 0 0.25. Do the same procedure with the other values of x, then we can find these values of f of x which are 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 4. From this table of values, we can have the graph of the function f of x is equal to 2 raised to x as shown at the right. As we can observe, both table of values and graph show that as the values of x increase, so as the values of f of x or y increase. Let's go to another function. Let us use f of x is equal to 5 raised to x. The same behavior is also shown in the table of values and the graph of this function. As we can see, as the values of x increase, so as the values of f of x. And it's also obvious in our graph. As x increases, y increases. At this point, let us now find the limits of exponential functions. Let us begin with an exponential function whose base is greater than 1. Let us have the limit of the function 2 raised to x as x approaches positive infinity. To answer this, let us begin using a table of values. Let us say we have positive values such as 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, since according to the given, x approaches positive infinity. To find the values of f of x, we need to do direct substitution. So let's say x is equal to 1. So 2 raised to 1 is equal to 2. Do the same procedure with the other values of x. So we now have the values of f of x which are 4, 8, 32, and 1024. Observe here that the values of f of x are increasing as x increases, thus making the limit of the function 2 raised to x as x approaches positive infinity equal to positive infinity. What does it mean? That only means that there is no limit at its value. It goes positive infinity. 
If we use the graph of the function 2 raised to x, as seen at the right, as x approaches positive infinity or as we go to the right, the graph goes up, which means to say that the y or the f of x values are approaching positive infinity. Hence, we can now conclude that the answer to the limit of 2 raised to x as x approaches positive infinity is positive infinity. Now, using the same function, 2 raised to x, let us evaluate the limit as we approach different values. Let's say the limit of 2 raised to x as x approaches negative infinity, we can answer this by looking at the graph of the function. So as we go to the left side of our graph, the graph is approaching 0. Therefore, the answer to this is equal to 0. Next is the limit of 2 raised to x as x approaches 0. As we can see in our graph, as x approaches 0, either from the left or from the right, both approach 1. Therefore, the limit is equal to 1. Next is the limit of 2 raised to x as x approaches 2. So let us approach 2 from the left and from the right. So from the left side, so the graph goes at 4. And then from the right, the graph goes at 4 as well. Therefore, the answer is equal to 4. Next is the limit of 2 raised to x as x approaches negative 1. So let us approach negative 1 from the left and from the right. So they meet at this point, which is equivalent to 1 half. So the answer here is equal to 1 half. As you can see, the last three items can be evaluated using direct substitution. So to summarize the limit of exponential function, when the base is greater than 1, we can have the following. The limit of a raised to x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to positive infinity. Next, the limit of a raised to x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to 0. And the limit of a raised to x as x approaches c, where c is a constant, is equal to a raised to c, or where c is in the domain of the function. At this point, let us analyze the graph and table of values of exponential functions whose base is between 0 and 1. Let us consider the exponential function f of x is equal to 1 half raised to the power of x. Let us take a look at the table of values and the graph of this function. Let's begin with the table of values. As we can see here, the values of x are increasing while the values of f of x are decreasing. And if we are going to continue getting higher values of x, we can see that the values of f of x are getting closer to zero. This can easily be observed with the use of a graph. As we can see at the right, as x increases, the values of y or f of x decreases and it gets closer and closer to zero but will never touch zero or will not go beyond to negative values on the y-axis. Let's have another example. Let us use f of x is equal to 1 fourth raised to the power of x. As we can see, the base 1 fourth satisfies the condition that a is between 0 and 1. Looking at the table of values and the graph of this, same behavior is shown here. As x increases, f of x decreases and the values are getting closer to 0. And it's very obvious with our graph. Again, it will never touch 0 and it will never go beyond 0. So let us now find the limits of exponential functions whose base is between 0 and 1. Let us use the function 1 half raised to the power of x. So let us find the limit of 1 half raised to the power of x as x approaches positive infinity. To find the limit of this function, let us use first the table of values. So let's say we have the values of x 1, 2, 3, 5, and 10 since in our given, x approaches positive infinity. 
So again, to find the values of f of x, we'll just simply do direct substitution. Let x be 1, so the answer is 0 0.5. Let x be 2, the answer is 0 0.25. And continue the procedure, so we have 0 0.13, rounded off, 0 0.03, and 0 0.016. Let's observe the table of values. As x increases, the values of f of x decreases. And again, they are getting closer and closer to zero. We can easily observe this with the use of the graph. So here, as we go to the right, going to positive infinity, the values of f of x are getting closer to zero. Hence, we can now have the answer for this. So the answer is zero, or the limit is equal to zero. Now, using the same function, let us evaluate the limit as we approach different values. Limit of 1 half raised to the power of x as x approaches negative infinity. Let us use the graph to answer this. So as we go to the left that goes to negative infinity, the graph goes up continuously. Therefore, the answer is positive infinity. Next is the limit of 1 half raised to the power of x as x approaches 0. So let us approach 0 both from the left and from the right. So from the left, it goes at 1. From the right, it approaches 1 as well. Therefore, the answer is equal to 1. Next is the limit of 1 half raised to x as x approaches 2. So let us approach 2 both from the left and from the right. So here is point 2. So from the left, the point is here. From the right, the point is here as well. So this is equal to 1 4. And last, we have the limit of 1 half raised to x as x approaches negative 1. So here is negative 1 at x. Approaching this from the left, or based on the graph here, it goes at 2 from the right. It approaches 2 as well. Therefore, the limit is equal to 2. Same with the previous example, the last three items here can be evaluated using direct substitution. Meaning to say, by just plugging in the value of x that we are approaching to the variable in the function, we can simply get the limit of it. For example, when x is 0 or when we approach 0, let this be 0. 1 half raised to 0 is equal to 1. Let this be equal to 2, 1 half raised to 2 is equal to 1 fourth. Let this be negative 1, so 1 half raised to negative 1 is equal to 2. And to summarize the limit of the function, f of x is equal to a raised to x, where a is between 0 and 1, we have the following. The limit of a raised to x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to 0. The limit of a raised to x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to positive infinity. And the limit a raised to x as x approaches a constant c is equal to a raised to c, where c is in the domain of the function. Now, let us have more examples where we can apply direct substitution. Let's say you are asked to find the limit of 3 raised to x minus 1 as x approaches 2. As we can see, we are approaching a real number, so we can just simply plug in 2 to the given function. So we can now have... 3 raised to 2 minus 1, simplify the exponents, so this becomes 3 raised to 1, and 3 raised to 1 is equal to 3. So the limit is equal to 3. Next is the limit of 1 third raised to 1 minus x minus 1 as x approaches 3. Same procedure to be done, just plug in 3 to our given function, so this becomes 1 third raised to 1 minus 3 minus 1, simplify the exponent. So we have 1 third raised to negative 2 minus 1, applying the loss of exponent. So this becomes 3 raised to the power of 2, which is equivalent to 9. 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. So the limit is 8. At this point, kindly check your own understanding based on our discussion. You may pause the video to answer the following items. You may start. Are you done? Let us now check your work. For the limit of 1 fourth raised to x as x approaches negative infinity, the answer is positive infinity. Next, 
The limit of 6 raised to negative x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to 0. Third, the limit of 1 half raised to 2x minus 3 as x approaches 0 is equal to negative 2. And last, the limit of 2 raised to x minus 4 as x approaches 3 is equal to 4. Were you able to get all of these answers correctly? If yes, great job! Here are the things that you need to take note about finding the limits of exponential function. When the function is equal to a raised to x, where the base is greater than 1, here are the things that you have to take note. The limit of a raised to x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to positive infinity. The limit of a raised to x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to 0. And the limit of a raised to x as x approaches a constant is equal to a raised to c. You may also think of the graph of the function that satisfies the given condition. And for its opposite, wherein the base is between 0 and 1, the limit of a raised to x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to 0. The limit of a raised to x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to positive infinity. And the limit of a raised to x as x approaches a constant is equal to a raised to c where you can apply direct substitution. That will be all for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned a lot in this video. Please don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe on my YouTube channel so you will be updated with the latest video tutorials in math here in our math room. Bye everyone! See you next time!